Hi everyone, thanks for logging into the FLIP lecture for uh, this week. And again, I apologize for, um, you know, the change again, but my schedule just seems to be kind of uh, crazy right now. But again, I think this kind of a pedagogical approach, especially in some of our classes, is very appropriate, especially for what I have planned for you um, without the FLIP lecture. I don't think a lecture alone will be as effective as what I have planned for you um, in this environment. So I'll, I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But um, obviously, uh, you are already into the FLIP lecture because you're watching this video. So it, as the others have started out, um, I'm just trying to provide an introduction video to guide you through the steps that I'd like you to take um, to uh, gain the information that, that we have planned for you uh, um, in this unit. And uh, the second place that you'll go is here. And this will be a, a video by Dr. Katie Swalwell. And she is an assistant professor with us in the School of Education, who is one of the uh, professors who teaches social studies methods. And just like the others, I have asked her to, number one, talk to us about what content do you have to know as a um, social studies teacher at the elementary level. And again, take that very seriously, you guys, because again, that's why you take the general eds education classes that you did. It's to build your content knowledge. And then we asked her to talk about the pedagogical approaches that are used in um, social studies learning. And she brings up a really important topic where she talks about um, kind of inquiry-based learning and how other content areas uses that same pedagogical approach. And that's very true. Um, when we talked about literacy, literacy has some real specific approaches that um, is used to teach reading and literacy skills, but um, some of those pedagogical approaches can be adapted or used, adopted in other content areas too. So Dr. Sw Swalwell talks about that a little bit, and I think, once again, I think you'll enjoy just at least hearing from her and seeing her and knowing her um, as part of our program here in the School of Ed. The third thing that I would like to for you to do is, is read. Um, read the article. It's called Giving, Prompting, Making, and Aligning Technology and Pedagogy with T Within TPAC for Social Studies. So it's perfect um, for us. I think this is another really good article. I think the literacy one was really good too. It sets you in the context of, you know, how do I think about TPAC around social studies or literacy or whatever. These authors do another really good job of giving you examples. And what they do is they set you in the context of what they have researched is they feel like, okay, when I see technology being used in a social studies classroom, people usually or tend to use it in these three ways. And they've had it prompting, making, and aligning. And so read about that and think about that. And we will talk about that more on Tuesday when I see you for uh, class next week. But I, I do think it's a really um, useful um, article for you. Then uh, this is the part that this is the part that I'm glad that I'm doing a flipped lecture because without flipped, all I could do is show it to you on the screen. And you know, what I really need you to do is I need you to go in and really look at these so that you get what it is rather than I'm just, you know, delivering it and you're looking at it. So the first one is I want you to go out and explore what we call web quests. That's exactly what they are. They're quests on the web. And um, if you want to find out more background information, come down here to the bottom. And there's some information on this screen. Uh, they were actually, they're almost 20 years old in terms of technology. That's pretty old. Um, but they're kind of, kind of those oldie but goodies again. And I think they've done some interesting things with them. If I go back, the other thing is this garden quest. If you look here and pull down the subject areas, you'll see that I have, I have selected a few from the social studies area, but if I go to science 
and the topic that will come up starting probably next week or a couple weeks here and search three to, to five and bring it up in my search engine sometimes just warning you it comes up a little bit slow it's not instantaneously but notice there's over 284 web quests in science on this site just for the grade band three to five and then you just kind of go look at them through here so there are many others that you can explore but I've tr tried to scaffold this because since it is new I wanted to pick some halfway pretty good ones for you to explore and to think about that and look at I, I put up a couple questions here just for you to think about they're just um, gathering questions um, anticipatory set kinds of questions what will students learn if they do this web quest so again what would what would have been the objectives because the objectives aren't listed okay and then as you explore it how would you revise it or improve it to make it a better design task or a task that the students are doing so again just pick any one of these that you want to I tried to pick um, uh, different levels as well so that you could kind of see you know um, if web quest for younger students, web quest for older students and so forth but one thing that will happen is they'll all follow, follow this design all web quests have an introduction okay they have a task so this sets up the task they have a process the process is usually more like a um, lesson plan procedure this one isn't real long like others in, in the group so again look at look at a variety of them I know you want to look at one and then go on you guys please spend some time look at this see what it's doing I think you'll find them interesting and again it will, it will just give you some ideas on what you can do in your own classroom but notice it does do a evaluation oh funny a little bit of a rubric here right they've set up a, a rubric of, of some type here and then a conclusion as with all um, lesson plans it seems like you know we want to have a conclusion that's what this that's this kind of tries to tie it all together and stuff so again there's different ones set up different ways have a look at them um, but really kind of think about those guiding questions as you go through you know um, what do the students learn and then what would you do to make it better because they're not perfect okay none of them are perfect but I think you'll you'll find it interesting again in the article the article talks about web quests so now you'll have the context of what it means by the web quests when they talk about it the the fifth thing here or the the second thing that I really want you to look at are virtual field trips um, how cool are virtual field trips in that in the assumption that you know what on a virtual field trip I'm going to places that probably without the technology I wouldn't be able to go there um, my last one on the list here is the San Diego Zoo great you know what if again I I can maybe go to a zoo here in Iowa somewhere but I can't go to the San Diego Zoo which is supposed to be the best zoo in the world okay so Little, finding little things like this will help you in, you know, taking the students to those areas, okay? So that's just one. That one's a little bit noisy, so I'll put the White House, Seven Wonders of the World, the Museum of Natural History. The one warning that I would give you with these is um, you got to kind of put yourself in that environment. They're not, not all the time are they user-friendly. Not our, all the time are they just this immersive environment where now I'm, you know, 3D looking around. And, you know, you got to use your imagination. You got to kind of seek and find on that site. But I think you'll find some interesting things that you can use in your classroom with students. Maybe not all of it, but parts of it. Again, taking them to an environment that without the technology, I couldn't get them there. And we don't want to forget about them. One that I do want to show you just very, very quickly or just talk about Google Lit Trips. I just hope that all of you will try this, but, but you have to have Google Earth loaded on your computer. You guys, I would have Google Earth on your computer anyway. Um, great application, 
uh, you know, we use Google Maps and those kinds of things, but Google Earth gives us the 3D, um, and it's just, it's wonderful. But these will not work unless you have Google Earth on it, okay? So what they are, are their lessons that have been created that go along with, um, with a book. So this is Sam Patch, Daredevil Jumper. And if I go up here, notice Sam Patch, Daredevil Jumper, it's a download. So I have to download this software to my computer as well. And then I launch that, and then it works in tandem with um, Google Earth, okay? So it's worth it. I think they're great because what it does is I, as I read the book, I see where the characters are and the geography with taking people to places they've never been. Wow, it's really powerful. So I do hope you do it. If you don't, please make a note in your, in your notes and I hope you'll go back to it when you have a little bit more time, time to look at them. Okay? Okay, so that's kind of it then. Um, as always, you do have an exit ticket. Answer those questions. Again, I've set the deadline is at Monday um, at 9. And again, try to get you done before um, you have the classes then on Tuesday. I do have an extra reading here in social studies activity types. I've tried to provide those for every subject area that we've done. It goes along with the TPAC model. Again, the activity type is more like the pedagogical approach and what it is. Um, or at least strategies, teaching strategies, those kinds of things. And then it has over here, again, technologies that like social studies teachers would use in order to do that. Okay? But that's just extra, not required, but I hope you have a look at it. And then, so again, the exit ticket. So that's our flip lecture. Again, um, video from instructor, uh, reading exploring a couple of, of technology, very immersive kinds of environments that are created that have social studies in mind, and then the exit ticket, okay? So thank you again for your flexibility. I, I hope that you find this, uh, this flip lecture um, interesting and informative and that you learn, you know, learn new things. That's the goal, right? And so we will see you next week. Have a great weekend and we'll be ready to follow up with this on Tuesday. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.